Welcome to Whole CEO with Lisa G. I'm the best-selling author of The Boss Weight Loss. I'm bringing you the top tips to be unstoppable. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to actually pull up a chair with today's top experts in weight loss, mindset, and business. Learn our top tips to set you up for success so that you can have more energy, be fit and resilient, and feel unstoppable. Welcome to Whole CEO with Lisa G. I'm so excited and honored today. I'm here with Mark Deluzio, founder CEO of Lean Horizons, former corporate officer, vice president of Danaher Business Systems, um, deploying on a global basis, he was selected by Danaher to be on the first study mission to Japan, studying under the original developers of the Toyota production system. And he's a global speaker. And I want to talk to you, even though you're CFO and pioneer and all this other stuff, I want to speak to you on a little bit more of a personal basis. After I heard your story, I was so impressed and saddened at the same time that you have had two sons who fought in combat in the Middle East and unfortunately became a gold star father in 2010 when your son Stephen, at the age of 25 was killed in action fighting the Taliban in Afghanistan. Stephen was awarded the Bronze Star, the Purple Heart Army Commendation Medal, Combat Infantry Badge, as well as other decorations for his selfless bravery. So carrying on both of your son's contribution to our country. I wanna hear how you were inspired to help veterans wishing to start a business or needing career advice and your organization, Brave Business Reviews and Advisors to Veteran Entrepreneurs. So welcome, 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 Mark. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks for having me. By the way, uh, my son, Stephen, in addition to all those uh, accommodations, I mean, the, uh, uh, the the awards and all that, medals, he also got the good conduct and that's his guys when they came back from Afghanistan. How did that happen? Stephen getting the good conduct medal? I mean, you guys must have been really bad. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just a joke. Stephen was a real clown, um, but a great leader. Unbelievable. They still talk about him. So, um, I love how you're carrying on your mission. And I know from just the brief conversations we've had, we met on LinkedIn. And I know from our brief conversations that you've had that to be a gold star family, it usually tears families apart. So I want you to be able to speak to all the good you're doing for veterans in the world with Brave. And I want to speak to you how your family was able to move on after this tragedy of Stephen's death. Well, part of it is that you don't have a choice. You have to move on, but you can uh, take the, the dour road and the dark road, or you can say, okay, well, uh, why are we here? And, and, and why do you have to die, right? And, and so let's take, let's make good out of that, right? Let's not, uh, it's real easy to be negative. It's really easy to look at the, the glass half empty, but we got inspired, especially more and more of the great thing we did, uh, not only in the service and how many lives he saved, but also uh, what he did out of the service as well. And so we were inspired to say, hey, look, we're going we're gonna to try to do good. Uh, it, it was a struggle for us, and, and it always is family, and it still is. I mean, it's not like 10 years later, it's still just as as it was back then, and it always will be. But the thing about it, number one, I'm very stubborn, and I told you probably earlier that I'm not going to let the Taliban win, <laughs> number one. Uh, okay. Uh, number two, I've realized and I became very spiritual after Stephen died that that God's given me an unbelievable, unbelievable gift. Uh, everything, all my talents and all of my experiences and mistakes, which, by the way, are very valuable, um, are, are gifts from God, right? And, 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 and so they're on loan to me. And so what do I do with them, right? Well, I started learning the plight of the veterans, uh, Lisa, as they came back, right. uh, the guys, especially the fifth and for Stephen, and uh, started seeing all kinds of uh, integration problems that they've had into society. Uh, they've had all kinds of problems with getting jobs, whole jobs. Uh, some wants to, wanted to start businesses. So Brave, 
Again, business reviews and advisors for veteran entrepreneurs help helps veterans start businesses, improve an existing business, or we help them with their careers. Okay, so uh, that's that's what I do. I mean, you know, I, I I've got such a great background, and I've made so many mistakes <laughs> that my job is. To, that's what this is yeah, about. Yeah. It's like, how do you fail forward? And nobody's had to fail forward from such a tragedy as you have. So that's why I really wanted to speak to you, and I really love that you became spiritual and you wanted to be so generous and give because I, we all know the plight of the veterans. It's so hard for them to reintegrate into society because of the post-traumatic stress disorder. So I admire so much your organization, Brave, and what you are doing. So um, tell us um, how you help these people and um, what their success levels are. Yeah, it's been very good so far, uh, you know, uh, men and women, by the way, who come out. And uh, by the way, I will also offer this to first responders, police, fire, uh, people like that, too, because to me, they're also heroes, right? Of course. And they're, they're anyway, so grateful yeah. for, for everybody that serves our country. Right. You know, when you have a job that when you leave in the morning as a police officer and your wife or husband doesn't know you're coming back that night, you know, uh, that's a big deal. So, and emergency uh, workers too in hospitals lately. Well, that's even more accentuated now, right? Because of the COVID and all that. Yeah, exactly. So I guess I guess uh, I've got these great talents. Again, I've had the lucky experience of being in the right place sometimes to learn all this stuff. And uh, so what we do to answer your question is we we actually uh, uh, create strategic plans, business plans. Uh, we analyze petition. I ask a lot of dumb questions like, you know, why the hell, why should I go to you if you want to be an electrician? What's so special about you? And I'll say it that way. That's not a you dumb question, me. though. They got to sell themselves. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, they have to ask, answer that question because they're going to they're going to be asked that by a client That's and cool. you have to have a good answer. Right. And uh, the other is, you know, we look at uh, market, we look at the, the viability, help them, help them with uh, marketing. Uh, get loans, all kinds of things that you'd imagine that a business has to do, we help them with. And uh, and so that's one thing. Now on the career side, we help veterans. I have a team of people, uh, people on my right help. And on the career side, we help them get jobs. Now veterans will call up and say, I need my resume. Well, that's the question. Right, because Wait, I'm sorry. Say that again. You're breaking up a little. Oh, geez, I'm breaking up again. Uh, yeah, I said that's the wrong question because um, uh, the resume we have a, is the problem. Right. We, well, we're in step. So step six is write the resume. Okay. And, and uh, but how we look at so my philosophy on career, it's a four step process. The first thing you need to do, I ask them, is regardless of your background, what is your pen? Okay. Well, what is what your are you passion? passionate about? Yeah, so they have to find their passion before they're writing their resume and find their story. Like you yeah, guys have a story. I love the story that you and your wife have of, of starting a business together after such grief and, and finding some good that you want to do in the world from your pain. I love that. So people need to find the story from their pain, right? Yeah. And, and after they really you know think about what their passion is, now the question is, can I match it up to a vocation, Right. And if I can, that's great. Next, the third part of the of the uh, of the process is, can that vocation generate enough income and financial security to to be able to live the life I need to live? Whether or not you have kids in college or if you have uh, whatever, right? And then the last, okay, once all those three boxes are checked and they're, and they're never checked hundred percent, but let's say you got a situation, now you have to say to yourself, okay, this vocation reconcile with my family in other words if i love to teach so i find i'm going to be a consultant boy i love that okay i love to help others and it pays a lot of money but then i come home and i tell my wife i'm going to be 90 percent of the time well that's not going to work so so you have to have the four boxes sort of check passion vocation financial security and family and and if you could do that then you will not, and I wrote a paper on this, by the way, that I send you, it's, it's called Never Again, because if you've got all that, you will never feel like you're working, okay? So repeat uh, the four things, it's passion, vocation, financial security, passion, family. Passion, 
then match that final location that allows you to exercise that passion and then make sure the financial numbers are there for you. And it doesn't mean you have to make a million dollars. It just means that you've got to make enough money to be able to support, you know, what, how you want to live. And then how does that all reconcile with your family life, your kids, your family, your wife, your husband. And, and once you get all that checked, you will not feel like you're working. Okay. I love that. So once you yeah. find your passion, your vocation, and it checks all the boxes and it works in your family, then you'll never feel like you're working a day in your life because you're working on your passion. Yeah. And, and, and I'll tell you, the other thing, uh, Lisa, is a lot of the veterans come back and they, and they have, hey, I, I got trained to shoot a gun. That's not applicable in corporate America. By the way, there are some few people I wanted to shoot at times, but I didn't. <laughs> uh, I admire your restraint there, Mark. Uh, but anyway, uh, but I said, well, wait a minute now. What about, see, they only focus on the, many, many of them focus only on the tangible stuff that they did, not the intangible. Like, for example, if you're in the military, you've learned discipline, you've learned leadership, you've learned problem solving, okay, uh, project management. And I even gave the example, I say, okay, my son, for example, who has a podcast, uh, he, and he talks about veterans. I, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know about that in a minute. Awesome. Please. He said, he said, he said, you know, if if your commanding officer asks you to walk guy pee in a cup for a drug test, you might say that's no big deal, right? Well, guess what? The guy that's taking that drug test is going to be operating a multi-million dollar piece of equipment that could kill thousands. Okay. So it's kind of a big deal that he put his faith in you to make sure that was a legit drug test. Okay. Oh yeah. So you have to you have to think about things like that, right? And in in the whole ability to problem solve and lead and and all that. And so um, and be spontaneous, especially if you're in combat. Uh, every plan that you put into place on every mission is wrong that you start it. <laughs> so you yeah. have to be able to adjust and have countermeasures and all that. So all these skills they don't think about, right? And, and that's what I try to bring to the table. And then, and then the next thing is, you know, uh, we have to demilitarize their resume because what I call TLAs, three letter acronym, acronyms, which, you know, they, they have so, so much jargon in the military that it becomes so natural that when they talk to others who weren't military, you're like, you just talked to me in Swahili. What are you talking about? You know? Yeah, translating I mean, I in English for yeah, I went to the FOB and I went to the JRD and I went to, you know, I said, what are you saying? You know, so they have to kind of, we do a really good job, Lisa, helping our men and women put the uniform on. This country does an awful job helping them take it off. So. That's where you come in. I, I love what you're doing. And I love, and I think if any smart CEOs are, are listening, that they would want to hire someone who's, who is a disciplined person. Like you, they always like oh, yeah. athletes. You know, you're coming out of the military, you're disciplined, you're a leader. Everyone wants a leader that can think outside the box. And I love the way when things, they can't go according to plan because life doesn't work lately from anything that I've seen in my entire life, according to plans. That's like God's joke, isn't it? Man plans and God laughs. <laughs> yeah, well, it's true. The only thing you probably rely on is that you're going to get taxed and that you're going to die. <laughs> but yeah, uh, other so than that, I, I feel your guys and girls and women have so much to offer in the corporate world and, and all that experience. And I love the way you can help put th that in boxes for them so they can see where they fit in and how do you help them? I know this is a short interview, so I would just like to finish with a couple of things here. Um, how do you help them? deal with the PTSD, do you have any special um, advice for them on that? Well, we've all I'm been not, traumatized lately and that's why I want to talk to you. We've all been yeah. so much. Yeah, I mean, PTSD happens more than just to the military, but you know, the, the statistics are such that we lose 22 to suicide every day. That's so military, sad, I've heard about that. Yeah, well, I don't do therapy like that. I don't do PTSD counseling, but one of the things I am working on, there's an, there's an actress, and, and famous supermodel from the past, uh, Jennifer O'Neill. Uh, he has uh, a equine therapy ranch out in Nashville where she does equine therapy for veterans with PTSD. Now it's called Hope and Healing at Helen Glade. And uh, she, her fame to claim was that she was a cover girl model for 30 years. And then Christy Brinkley took over for her. And at one time they, she was a lot of the most beautiful woman in the world. And she was also did 40 movies wow. with uh, like John Wayne and Robert Duvall and, and, wow. and, 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 
her most famous movie was The Summer of 42. I love I that. Recommend. And where is her equine ranch? Uh, Nashville. 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 I love yeah. that. No, no, she wrote she wrote a script, uh, Lisa, and and and, want, and wants to make a movie and wants to put my, you know, dedicated to my son. But her and I hooked up, and she would be the executive producer for the movie. So uh, I'll I'll watch that. You'll have to send a link over to me. The movie hasn't been made yet, but we are looking for a actors like Morgan Freeman and Danny Glover and um, Nicole Kidman, and we're looking at that. Cal, we already have a director out of Hollywood. We have a, wow. a producer out of Hollywood and, and a music director. And uh, so now we're looking for funding and, and uh, we're looking to get this thing moving. Now COVID kind of threw a big uh, wrench into the deal, you know, so. Oh, like, movies, the latest, yeah, absolutely. The latest year, but she asked me to be this, uh, this executive producer. And uh, my comment to her was, Jen, this is not the first time I've taken a job that I know nothing about. So I love I'll do that. It. So <laughs> equine therapy is just one of the ways that people can have a modality to be able to get away from the trauma and be able to find. Yeah, you know, you know horses it. are very, very intuitive. And what do they what, what they think about when you first approach them is that you're going to kill them, and they won't come to you unless you they trust you, and they could sense. So so the whole idea is like if you have an upset day and you go home and your family senses that when the minute you walk in the door, they can see it, they can feel it, uh, even if you say nothing. And horses are that way that they can sense that in individuals. So the whole idea of equine therapy is that to, to understand the you're giving off to your family and loved ones with your PSD and try to kind of rein that back in a little, forgive the pun, rein that back in a little so that you're not giving those vibes off and creating that. That negative, negative energy, because people like, um, right. everything is energy. It's like if, if you walk in and you're smiling and your shoulders are back, then you're more likely to be able to attract the kind of job opportunities and social opportunities than really? if you're walking around like with shoulders down, staring at the ground. So I think anything that can help with people's energy levels, I love that. And where can yeah. people find um, this equine therapy ranch in Nashville? What is uh, it called? They can go, they can go to, it's called in healing at Hillenade, H-I-L-L-E-N-L-A-D-E. -E. Uh, and uh, I'm not exactly the website on top of my tongue here. Wrong website. If you type that in, you'll you'll get to her. I'll, I'll, thing. I'll, I'll link it in here. So in okay. yeah, I'll, I'll get, I'll get it to you. And um, and then Brave, people can find it, B-R-A-V-E. Yeah, website is the number four, the Brave, for the Brave org, with the four being the number four. And um, I want to hear also um, where people can find your son's podcast and find you because I know you and I met on LinkedIn. Yeah, uh, you might even want to talk to Scott because he, he has his podcast called driveonpodcast.com and he interviews veterans and anybody associated with helping veterans get back in. And Lisa, if you go to, if you go to these, uh, this website, and maybe I could tell you a real quick story. But uh, there are chock full of people who do what you're interested in as far as uh, overcoming diverse, uh, adversity and, 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 and getting back into the saddle, if you will. And uh, there is one, actually, that is a very interesting one. Um, uh, I don't know if you know about burn pit cancer in, 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 in Afghanistan and Iraq, but what they would do is they would dig these big holes in the ground, put all the garbage in it, pour, pour diesel fuel on it, and light it on fire. Well, this smoke ended up start, starting to kill people with cancer. And long story short, Stephen's best friend, my son that got killed, when he got shot, uh, this, this guy named Wes Black ran out into enemy fire and tried to save him. And uh, Stephen died in his arms, okay? Um, so the battle ensued for like, Believe it or not, there were 120 of them and 18 of us, and we still won. Okay, that's how good we are. Uh, why, why this war is going on for 18 years, 17 years, I don't know why. But, but anyway, um, but anyway, we uh, he he came back and was diagnosed with uh, with uh, colon cancer, but they misdiagnosed him until two years later. They found that he really had it. Anyway, he's a poster child for burn pit cancer. He's terminal, uh, but this guy, for example, uh, Lisa. He had 40 rounds of chemo and never missed a day of work as a firefighter. 
I okay. love so, this guy. I absolutely have to speak to him. I have you, to. You do. You really do. I, I'll put I you in touch. I love that with story. I, I love people that keep going like you and your wife and your son and find the good that you can do in the world. And I'm so proud of all the work that you do and that you took time out of your day to speak to well, me. Let's not forget. Let's just not forget one thing. What I'm doing is easy. And, and, and uh, what they did was hard. And, and they're the ones that put the uniform on. So never forget that. So, well, thank you to your family for your service. And thank you for coming on my podcast. I appreciate it. Thank you. I really uh, enjoyed it and I enjoyed meeting you and I look forward to uh, continuing uh, our dialogue. Awesome.